Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing and deep learning. I'm here with Mark Hamilton from NVIDIA. How are you doing today, sir? Great, Rich. Uh, great to be on your show today. Well, well great. For, thanks for coming on. You know, we're in uh, Frankfurt, Germany for ISC 2016. This is the International Supercomputing Conference. And you guys had an announcement today about deep learning, uh, some software uh, development libraries. Uh, can you tell us more? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, it's, it's great to be here at an HPC show talking about our deep learning software. And we chose to announce uh, these software upgrades today because every single HPC center that we talk, about, talk to is doing deep learning. In fact, Andrew Ng being the keynote of the show, Baidu's chief scientist, I think just goes to reinforce that. But let's go ahead and talk about the software that we announced. I think many of, your, many of your listeners, of course, are really aware that these new approaches to AI on deep neural networks uh, are really based on a, a new computing model. And, and traditional, um, traditional programming won't go away, but more and more, with all the amounts of big data out there, you simply can't write traditional if-then-else code to process all of that big data. You don't have enough programmers in the world to do that. So with deep learning, the algorithm is the deep neural network, and you feed the data into the deep neural network, and you let it figure out what's represented in that data. In the high-performance computing space, a lot, of, <coughs> a lot of sites three years ago, four years ago, when uh, deep learning just started being used by some of the consumer web companies, thought this was just something for consumer web companies. But today, I just wanted to pick out three examples here from just pure traditional uh, HPC types of centers, NASA Ames, Oak Ridge, and Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. NASA Ames is actually using deep learning to analyze satellite imagery to detect the impact of carbon buildup in the atmosphere. It's amazing that they're able to train the network on that. Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, they do is they have 10 years of data of children's vital signs. Think of a poor child coming into the hospital, uh, laying down in the hospital bed and getting strapped up with sensors. What they're able to do now is go through and search through all of that data and correlate it and have the deep neural network automatically learn from what illnesses and what treatments were given, what the outcomes were of that child's life and improve their chances of living longer. And finally, Oak Ridge, uh, used, uh, Oak Ridge studied over 75,000 obituaries uh, that came just off of the web, and they were able to actually use a deep neural network to do natural language processing and go through and, and detect patterns of, of cancer and like, likeliness of cancer based on data in the obituaries. So tremendous uh, uh, examples of code that high-performance computing centers are using deep neural networks for. So, of course, Andrew Ng gave his keynote today. I think one of the key things he talked about is how hard strong scaling was and that to do, and that strong scaling was really the key to delivering the power of these ever-growing deep neural networks. As the network itself becomes bigger, you're able to process more types of data and you're able to process that more accurately. So in deep neural networks, companies like Baidu want the, the biggest strong scaling nodes that they can. And that's really what's, what's enabled by NVLink and the other features of the new P100 that let you build out up to eight GPUs in a strong scaled node. Um, you know, a lot of times in the HPC space, people talk about how slowly the codes move. In the deep learning space, we've said, seen this tremendous movement in four years, and all of the code basically has been written from scratch. And so we're keeping pace with that. Uh, libraries like our QDNN, uh, library for, for deep neural networks. We're coming out once a quarter with new updates to that library. And that's one of the software packages that we announced today, the latest upgrade on. So let's go through and, and walk through the different software updates we announced today. First of all, all of these are part of the NVIDIA SDK. And within the NVIDIA SDK, specifically our deep learning uh, SDK. What's in the deep learning SDK is really all of the high performance GPU accelerated uh, codes that you need for doing deep learning. It's important to understand where they sit in the framework. So what we're doing with libraries like QDNN and QBLAST, we're accelerating all of the deep learning frameworks. These are frameworks like CAFE, which is open source, um, Theano, Torch, 
TensorFlow from Google, of course, Microsoft CNTK, and others. And it's on top of these frameworks that customers are building computer vision applications, speech and audio apps, and natural language processing applications. And these are all equally good at being accelerated by the GPU. So what's new in the software? First, we announced Digits 4. Digits 4 is our, is our sort of mega framework that incorporates all of the other frameworks and provides a easy to use interface for data scientists. The frameworks, remember, typically written by a bunch of computer programmers at these companies, and they have a great interface for computer programmers. The data scientists may be a little bit more comfortable working in a more advanced user interface, and that's what Digits provides. And so with Digits 4, we added the capability within Digits to do object detection. So, of course, the first step in a deep neural network is just classifying what's in the object. Saying, so, okay, in this picture I have a pedestrian, or a car, or a truck, or a cat. With object detection, it not only detects different classes of objects in the picture, but it'll, it'll output where exactly in the picture is that particular object. So that's what's new for Digits 4. QDNN 5.1, it's a minor upgrade of QDNN because we just released QDNN 5 at GTC several months ago. But this improved performance for a number of different uh, neural network styles. And finally, <coughs> GIE. This is our first uh, uh, launch of GIE. And what GIE does is on the inference side, once you train your deep neural network in your framework and you put it into production, a GIE is an, opt is an optimized network for inference. So walking a little bit more through that, with digits, has the data management, training, and model assessment tools that let you take your training data and develop a fully trained network. Uh, today, most customers use the same framework that they develop the network on to do inference. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially for your first few applications, but there's more and more um, inference applications get delivered to a data center as you deliver into low power devices such as embedded devices or automotives which is a very high performance inference capability we can we can increase the performance of inference with GIE over three to four times think of GIE as in effect a compiler for your neural network so on this slide, we show some examples of different types of, of applications that would use uh, the object detection features of digits. GIE, of course, is one set of code, but can be used in the data center on GPUs like our new low-power Tesla M4, or as well as any other NVIDIA GPU. It can be used in, inside the car with our Drive PX automotive supercomputer. It can be used with our Jet with our Jetson TX1 module for low-powered embedded devices. And again, you can see on the right here the improvements in performance per watt from a CPU-only system, to in this case, the M4 with the GPU inference engine. So that's it for our software announcements. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess my question mark uh, is, uh, uh, you know, I happen to have the machine we're doing this uh, uh, recording on it is a Mac, uh, MacBook. Pro, right, and has an NVIDIA GPU. Could I be using the software development kit right here on my laptop? In theory, do you think? So the, e the easiest way to do that is, you know, almost all of the software developers in um, the deep learning space are running Ubuntu, and mm. so all of the frameworks are developed first on Ubuntu, oh, run on yeah. Ubuntu, and that's yeah, why yeah. we chose for the DGX1 or Deep Learning Supercomputer mm -hmm. that runs in U Ubuntu. Okay. We're also using for that, we're using a container technology. We're using uh, NVIDIA Dockers, which is a version of the Docker uh, container system. Mm -hmm. now, Dockers is just Linux on Linux, but there's no reason you couldn't use our um, NVIDIA Grid technology to take that user interface running on an Ubuntu server and deliver that through, through graphics accelerated VDI on your Mac laptop. And we've got many, many users using Macs with VMware or Citrix to connect to GPU enabled servers. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. Kind of making this ubiquitous and available out there for all those data scientists. Yeah. So, so, well, hey Mark, congratulations on the uh, launch of the SDK and uh, look forward to hearing more from NVIDIA about deep learning. Great, well, I would love to come back in the show in a few months. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah. All right, folks. 
That's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.